calling it pasta. It's 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 arrabbiata. No, not is, arrabbiata. No, this is there's no chili. This is Napolitana. Pasta Napolitana a la Oh, I love Victoria Montano. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she speaks in the third person. Victoria it makes Montano. me just laugh. I mean, seriously? I am Victoria Montano. Hi, I'm Chrissy Marsh. And I'm Victoria Montano. And as you can see, we are down one Nicole O'Neill today. Three musketeers, now two musketeers. We put a full, uh, few calls out to some celebs to come join Ooh. us. I asked David Beckham. Oh my God. No response. Oh, God, you asked him. You also asked. Oh, Victoria Beckham. She was giving me these ones. She was too busy. <laughs> but Nicole's not here. She can't open the champagne. So we're making a skinny bitch. But guess what? Victoria's put the ice in first. I put the ice nah, in first. Uh, Trap for young players. Always pour the vodka first, because otherwise I'll give you a cup full of vodka. I know. And that was actually what I like to do. I like to put the ice in first so that I don't quite know how much vodka I'm drinking. Big mistake. Okay, so what are we cooking? Okay, so I was really feeling that vegetarian angle with Nicole and I decided to do, we should do something really simple though. Okay, vegetarian again. A little bit vegetarian because, you know, I think sometimes it's confusing to think of like a great vegetarian meal that's tasty and fills you up. And it's also good not to meat free Mondays. Yes, love those days. <laughs> Love um, juice next. So we are doing really basic and something that you can do every week for the rest of your life. A basic pasta penne napolitana. Oh. And so is it penne passata as well? It's, it's yeah, a it's simple passata. passata. Very simple and I'm just adding a little bit of extra depth of flavour um, which I'll take you through later. Yum. And we're going to do that with a caprese salad. I think this is a great salad for summer and it's also a great salad for entertaining for big groups. Yes, I agree. Because it's super easy I and people get their portion. Ones. I do a Christmas wreath. Yes, that's what so I do. So I do round with the basil that's what I do. So like for Christmas, I do one for 50 people. Yeah. And it's that big and it looks so beautiful. I love on the it. Table. But you know what's interesting? Like I do a like a nonna's passata, which is in the cookbook, but you learn cooking from osmosis. And I think what's great about this is I've learned so much from you already. Oh, too. Potato bag, I learned potato. Yeah, bag. I know, but, but you know what's good? Like watch and learn. Oh, thirsty as a camel. Not doing school pickup today. Mm. Nor am I. Oh. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna start it. with this hot um, pan. It's already on the heat. Can you pass me that? Yes. Onion? Yes. I'm, I'm just going to do okay. some oh. olive oil. So you want the olive oil just to coat the base of the pan. And be liberal with it because yeah, it is a pasta sauce. It. Like, yeah. And measurements don't really matter. So that's what people get so caught up about is, oh my gosh, I put in too much of this. Just counter, counterbalance it. That's all it's about. And that's the great thing about cooking. I just love, like, my ugly would never too. look like that beautifully chopped up. <laughs> I'm gonna watch Victoria next time. I just need to exit the camera to get some salt. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm just, um, basically, onions have got to be clear, really, before you put anything else in. So once it gets clear, Okay, I like to put um, two pinches of salt in okay. now. And you're using sea salt? I use sea salt. Okay, you I use sea salt for all cooking salt? I use all sea salt. Okay. I grew up uh, in a proper wog household yeah. where we only had Saxa salt. Oh yeah. This is a big uh, upgrade for yeah. my family. But Saxa salt's kind of good too because it's got um, iodine in it and that's really important because so many people in Australia are actually uh, lacking from that. So. It's not bad, like I like my cooking salt to actually be an iodized salt, whereas my fancy salt I like to have is that. But you're Victoria Montano, I see your fancy pants. I'm very, I'm fancy 24 seven baby. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. okay, so basically with the oil now, this is not necessarily linked to this recipe, but it's an important thing to know. All the flavor in um, this pasta dish and all pasta dishes really comes from the oil. So whatever you do when you flavor the oil is essentially going to be the flavor of the pasta. pasta. So why am I saying that? Because today we're doing a really simple pasta which is Napolitana, which is obviously just your onion and your garlic and we'll do some fresh basil. But at this point, you know, once you've mastered this recipe is when you can get creative. So you can throw in tuna. Chili. Tuna. Yeah, or you could do uh, sage, for example, which is going to macerate into the olive oil. You could put in pancetta, you could put in guanciale, you could put in 
very beautiful wooden cab. So anything at this point, yeah. that's the And this is sort of, you know, even a cabanara, you can always, whatever that basis is, will bring in the flavor. Yeah. And that's the thing, you've just got to experiment. If your kids love broccoli, chuck broccoli into it. Ooh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Charlie would never do that. <laughs> We're going to put the um, garlic in now. I love the way that you always chop your garlic, not mince it. Well, I don't have a mincer. No, 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 but not mince it. Like, I actually put it through the garlic crush. Oh my god, no. Yeah. I, that's so. No, you don't like that? No, that no, feels okay. good to me. Okay. Um, I'm going to do more professional. Yeah, I'm going to top quantities now, just in case you guys are freaking out. It was one onion and four cloves of garlic. And these small cloves of garlic. Sometimes yeah. you get the garlic, and then you the organic this. Australian that's this big, and you yeah. probably only yeah. want one of those. Yeah. So, looking good. Now, what would you like? Now, this is not really what you're supposed to do, but I'm just gonna put a few fresh basil leaves in. In light of what I said about flavoring the oil, I'm going to obviously do fresh ones, because you know, they say you should never cook basil, but I do feel like it adds just a little bit. But doesn't it wilt and go a bit funny? But once you blend it up, it but doesn't matter. But I'm gonna matter. blend it, okay. and then it's just this beautiful basil-y flavor oh, like yum. through the sauce. Okay. I'd never do that, I like that. Look, I wouldn't do it if I wasn't gonna blend it, but we are gonna blend this later. And the reason that I started blending my pasta sauce, in fancy restaurants they do it because it looks fancy. Yes. But in my house, I have to do it to hide the onion and garlic, otherwise my kids won't eat it. Won't eat it. Yeah. But that's good, a lot of things, like a lot of spaghetti bolognese, people would hide vegetables in there in order to get it through to their children. So this is bone broth. So okay. my little trick is I do three quarters of a cup of bone broth. I do and that three too. three quarters of a yeah. cup. Or chicken stock, yeah. or beef stock. I try to do bone broth because I try to be like good for my kids. I think, oh, good But if it's vego, you need to do vegetable stock. Okay, so this is Don't three quarters of a cup. Don't trick your vegetarian friends. Three quarters of a cup, so white wine and chicken bone broth. Okay, in it goes. See, I'd put the white wine in normally first, yeah, let it evaporate, but... But it will evaporate. Yeah. It so, will go. Okay. This week, I think we should talk about uh, cooking. Yes. And crying. So, you launched, you did your book signing today for your cookbook. I did, I did. That's why I'm all dressed up. How did it go? Um, really well. But what I love is people are like, oh my God, you just love cooking. No, I don't necessarily love cooking, but I love the connectivity that cooking gives people. Because, you know, in this day and age, it's so disconnected, even with your children. But I love, they'll always say to me, mum, what's for dinner? Mum, what are we eating? Mum. That's, that's something that you've really ingrained culturally. Mm. So I've been to Chrissy's house a lot um, around mealtime and her kids, their life really revolves around what Chrissy's cooking every night. But do you think that that came with age or were they always like that? No, I think it probably came from living away from Australia probably yeah. was a big thing because in China we wanted to make food that tasted like Australia. Yeah. So I think that was a big thing. Um, but I also think getting them involved from a young age. I mean, pesto is a great thing that doesn't have any heat where people can get involved without having. So I think getting kids in the kitchen, getting kids to try new foods. Um, I mean, on the weekend I made a pasta salad and this little girl who'd never tried a lot of food before was absolutely loving it. Because That's nice. Yeah, what's this one? Okay, so tomato passata. This is tomato passata. Um, if you don't have time to make your own tomato passata, which the way I do very quickly is I get little tiny cherry tomatoes, like the cilantro ones in Australia, because I find them to be the best for that. I oven roast them on 250 and with salt and then an olive oil, and then I blitz them up. But if I don't have time to do that, my favorite is the Simon Johnson with basil. Do you have a favorite? No, I, I just like the straight mutti. Mutti to me is like the holy grail of Italian passadas. It is. And if I'm making a passata, I actually am a bit of a, a cheat factor. I put carrot, celery, and tomato only. That's all I put in it. But you know what, any store-bought is is super, super quick and great to use. And I think it's, you try a different ones, see what the kids like. I think you've just got to look for like not a lot of added sugar and try and get as natural as you can without a lot of preservatives. And we're just going to put the pasta in.
pastas in, so we've got about eight minutes. Tell me your story about that Italian lady. Oh look, I had an Italian lady that used to show me how to cook and she was just this absolute mushy fan. Can you, um, can you do this? Yes, I can do this. So don't I need to layer one, layer yeah. upon layer? Okay, are we doing a Christmas wreath? We're gonna do a Christmas wreath. Okay. So it is Christmas time coming up. And That's you know what's thick? Yeah, and you know what's good about it is I'm, I'm really hopeless at cutting them all evenly so they look the same. But Victoria's done a beautiful job of that. Look how pretty that is. Oh, I know. It's beautiful. You know what? Get, get kids involved in doing this. They will absolutely love doing this. You know, as soon as you get a kid in the kitchen worrying about where they're gonna put this leaf and what they're gonna do, it's fun. And you know what, it doesn't need to be perfect, but once they feel like they've actually done it and they've been involved in it, that's when they're gonna enjoy it. These are some big ass. Basilicol? Yeah, I'm loving it. Oh my God, I'm going in between, I'm going over, I'm really stuffing up. You shouldn't have given me the vodka before. <laughs> <laughs> Having people over, like I would just literally drizzle olive oil over this if it was just Tim and I. But I'm just thinking about Christmas and this is just a bit of store-bought pesto with cashew in it, you know, if you have one that, that, you, that you prefer. And I just add that just for a little bit of bougie. I just go for the more oily parts. Looks beautiful. It's so pretty, right? Yeah, a tiny beautiful. bit of olive oil because oh. we've got some in the um, in the pesto already. In the pesto. And then what I like to do is blitz my sauce to get rid of all the lumps because I have picky eaters in my family. Pasta and also the sauce. As you see, the colors totally change once blending. Which, so, which I think is like an important thing to get your kids used to because my kids used to think that I was tricking them by putting carrot in when I first started blending. And the truth is I was. <laughs> <laughs> but we haven't today because we're eating it. Today so we, we don't haven't. Need to today we anything haven't. Anything today. So I'm just going to put um, the pasta into here. There's a tiny bit of the water, pasta water left in there. And that'll thicken the sauce. And that's the most important thing about leaving a little bit in because it'll always give it that glossy, I'm not taking over, you can take take the reins, but it'll always give that beautiful, glossy uh, sort of thing. I would put some Parmesan in, in at this now, stage. I actually took the Parmesan down. That's all right, that's all right, we'll take it down to the table. I love to not use a lot of pans, so I would put a chopping board and That's what I'm going to do, take it oh, down. Take it down. That's what I love to do as well. And then everyone just serves themselves. Um, we've done that for many, many years and it's sort of very, I don't know, European style. Look at that beautiful fresh basil. Oh my goodness. Now this is absolutely delicious. This can be served as is. It can be served with a really meaty chicken schnitzel. Beautiful. It can be served with a piece of chicken breast. Like, or, you know, even a piece of salmon if you don't eat meat. But this is quintessential family cooking, you know, and... Oh my God, can I tell you? Isn't it? That just smells so good. But this isn't, what sort of pasta? It's a very big penne. It's just a gra penne grande. Oh. It's not like a traditional one. Penne grande, poco miseria. <laughs> um, and I yeah. just like how the sauce falls down into the middle of it, kind of yeah. like a baby cannelloni. We are going to go down and eat this oh now. God, I'm starving. This smells amazing, but look at it in the pan. It's a bit rustic. It's got it's got the it's VM got, it's feel. Got VM feel. Well, I'm allowed to say that. I, it's, it's a generational thing. She talks in the third person. I do. Like I do. I'm not talking about the KM feel. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let's get going. We'll see you at the table. You touched on cooking before. I did. You said that it was just a way that, you know, really brings your family together. It connects people. It connects people, yeah. yeah. Well, you're a massive entertainer. You don't sit on that barbecue because Tim doesn't, because Tim you doesn't, love it. Tim refuses, I hate Why barbecue. do you do it? I do that because I have to. No, you do it also because you've got people here 
you want to make everyone come together. You want to, and that's what cooking's about. Everyone thinks, oh my gosh, cooking's about providing a meal on the table. Like I have no problem if people arrive at my house and nothing is ready. I've got a girlfriend who's the queen of that. She would basically have the meat still wrapped up in the paper it came from the butcher. Really? Yes. I can't do that. Yeah, but you know what? Like there's nothing wrong with getting people involved in the kitchen. And that's like, this salad is a perfect example. People arrive at a dinner and they're really awkward and oh my gosh, I met you know, Victorian Tim's house and it's so beautiful and it's so opulent. Oh, you know what, I'm sorry, I didn't get time to make the salad. Do you mind just um, putting mozzarella and a slice? And, and all of a sudden they're like, because they feel useful. Okay, I don't do that. Well, come on, that's, you know, you gotta make people feel useful. And I think that's the biggest thing about cooking is getting other people involved. Okay, I'm the opposite of that, I have to say. Okay. I do cook because I love people and I cook to bring people together, but I like to be like alone in my own space. Oh God, that's amazing. Yummy, right? Mm. And, and the perfect al dente. It is perfect. Yeah. Um, like, that's amazing. how it can yeah. pass on this, right? Yeah. Okay, stop showing off, Miss Italia. Because <laughs> can I tell you, when I look at your cooking, I'm in total awe as well. Thank you, that's kind. It is. You're so much better. No, 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 no. But, but you've got to make people break it down a bit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't do that. But I do love cooking. Mm. And So why do you cook? I think cooking is a language. Like you can either speak the language or you can't. And you can learn the language. But like people are born. No. no, no. I do. I think no. it's a language. No one is born with a spoon in their hand. That's the whole thing I say in my cookbook. No. Not it's a spoon words. in my hand with an understanding of flavours. No. No. That's been taught through your heritage. It's been taught through your family. I've taught my kids. I pick up a basil, I'm like, smell it. I pick up dill, I say, smell it. It's, that's a taught thing. But you've always had that in your family, so that's just what you presume. I don't know. And you know what? Anyone out there, everyone can create that within their own home. Just start by bringing home a herb and letting your kids smell it. That's as simple as it is. I think, though, the downside of cooking is the cleaning up. Other than the cleaning up. <laughs> is it often falls predominantly on the woman's shoulder. And I do think, now it still does. And I do Jolly think cooks. if you don't like cooking, mm. it would be so daunting to think, I've got 365 meals a day to I know, cook. but it's not like you say, oh my gosh, I don't say, oh my gosh, I love chopping that onion. I love chopping that garlic. No. I love putting this meal down and my kids going, oh, mum, that tastes great. Or, you know, one of my best meals is everyone coming over and making their own dumplings before they eat. Wow. They're some of my best nights. You need to get a bit more interactive. I'm not. I like you to... can't do everything yourself. You're I do control everything freak. myself. You're a control freak. That's what we've come down I to. I do all the prep. No, that's I too much. I cook in secret. I set the table. I put the food on that's the table. way too much you've got to get people involved and look don't get me wrong i've seen you spreads they're amazing but i do think it's a lot about connectivity well on friday night i'm having people over chrissy and nicole are both away so they can't come and i'm just saying girls or you girls get involved. you've been as someone i know says you're going to be put to work yes exactly and they'll feel useful and they'll come <laughs> and... but you know what i think it's an interesting thing like anything in life is a learned or a taught skill and I, I find it interesting because this segment is about cooking and crying yeah and one thing my husband has taught me is believe what people say and believe in that truth so if someone's crying they're genuinely upset I never think oh my gosh that's crocodile tears or that's put on or that that's your perception of what that situation is you're not inside that person's body and know what's going on I think that people I think crying is a reflection of heightened emotion in human beings. Yes. Um, this is so In contrast to what you just said, I don't believe in crocodile tears. Unless it's proper acting, then that's crocodile tears. But I can't do that. I No, nor can I. Um, but I think it's a, it is, you know, it is true emotion. But it not not necessarily sadness. You know, it might be because someone's embarrassed. It might oh. be because someone 
feels they've done the wrong thing. Oh my god, I cry like that the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't think crying necessarily means that the person crying is always like the victim or the person that you know you should pity. Like sometimes a person is crying because they've done the wrong thing. Exactly. Or Or that's how they feel. That's how they feel. They're embarrassed. But I don't think you can Mm. ever say someone you know has crocodile tears. I think the no. tears always mean something. What they mean is open. That's what's open to interpretation. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think, look, I look at my kids over the years and, and when they, you know, genuinely cried or when, whether, whenever they cried, I believe it and I believe that it's real. Um, I, my kids have been embarrassed if I cry or if I do this, but... I think that for them is, is you know what, it's important to show emotions, it's important to feel, it's important to show what, what that it's okay. Is. Are you generally a crier? No. Like, I, I'd probably say within my family, I haven't cried for years. Like, literally, it takes me a lot. I think I go through, I go through peaks and troughs. Like, yeah. But your kids are younger. When I was younger, I was way more emotional because I'm dealing with, you know, work, young kids. It's totally different. Once your kids are older, a little bit more independent, you're not as pressed and as stressed and as under the pump. I'm sure I burst into tears a gazillion times. Whereas now the kids are older, you're not under that pressure cooker. The place where I'm always guaranteed to absolutely cry cry is 30 thousand feet up in the sky watching a movie like what the yeah. hell is it a, do you not no i'm not a big movie cryer. do not watch no, that's, on the plane. That's, that's a heavy movie i was howling the air hostess had to come and check on me to see if i was okay i could i cried in little mermaid when i watched it on the plane jerk. i don't drink on the plane oh my gosh are you kidding me it's anywhere i fly <laughs> Do not drink on the plane. Can I just say, guys, if you're going to cook anything, cook this. Absolutely beautiful. What are we calling it? <coughs> oh, I have no idea. Okay, you're calling it pasta. It's, it's, it's. Arabiata. It's, no, not arabiata. No, this is, there's no chili. This is Napolitana. Pasta Napolitana a la. Oh, a la yeah. Victoria Montano. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she speaks so It makes Mont- me just laugh. I mean, seriously? I am Victoria Montano. Yes, but you know what? You are a Gen X as well. Oh you know how everyone says, oh, Chrissy's from a different generation. You guys, we're the same generation. I'm your generation. Cheers to you. I'm you're a- an amazing cook Thank and, you. an, and amazing you're an amazing friend. kitchen. And, and we miss you, Nicole. Do we? We've had fun. <laughs> we do miss you. <laughs> I only said that because you'd kill me.